Chief, if you could uh, please speak to me. My name is Chief Etelbert Onoha. I'm the project manager for this college Lagoon project. And uh, to be very brief, because we have gone around many of the clans to explain ourselves. We want to turn that Kole Lagoon, the way it is now, into a modern city. We have discussed with investors that have the money, they have looked at it and they have agreed that they will turn that place like a city you can see in Europe. They want to bring in investment, banks, houses, shopping mall, health facility, everything you think you can see in a mega city, that is what they want to come to do. And they have sent us to come and make the way. We are not the ones who are coming to bring the money, but we are like John the Baptist. We want to clean the way for them to come. And in doing that, we didn't want to go straight to government because we understand community development. So we said, let's come to the community people that own the land. Let our mind be one with them. They together, they cannot take us to government. And that is what have brought us to you today. We want you to let us have that land. It's your own. It has been lying down there. Let us together with you develop it where it will bring income to you, bring to the state, bring job for your children. Because the way we have planned that place, it will engage most of your youth, your women, to work there. And at the end, too, you are going to have a share in that project. And it will bring income to you and to us. So we plead with you to cooperate with us and let's make that Kole Lagoon a success. God bless you. Thank you. For many, many, one now, Kole Lagoon, down. Bafi, 60 years ago, to 70 years ago, then again, you know, what you could hear, you say, you fell, Kole did there. Nicole and Nache, Piantone, Coriele, Gayo Punava, Nache, Ibaka Colli. The war drum okay, Nimekani Nemba, Colli project name. The war fair was solid. Colli a cafe in his air could now back a shin, Baba Chuni, a colli, cab went to Kikapa, cab went to Kikapa. The name of fair walk a solomon. And yes, sir, Colli. If you are no young, the bonny chief, you in a banana and pepper, you are don't. She down. Okay, I need that. Okay, she down. Okay, she down. Okay, she down. Okay, she down. Okay, she yeah, 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 yeah <laughs>
<laughs> My name is David Apia, President of ICC um, Canada. Yeah, my name is Chief Etelbert Onwa, I'm the coordinator of ICC in Ghana, the organization that is engaging in the Kali Lagoon project in Accra. All right, so David, I just want you to tell me uh, the significance of today's meeting with the government chair. Well, today's meeting was a continuation of a series of meetings that we've had with him. I think uh, today was the third time we've met him, and uh, today was more or less like a climax of um, our meetings with him. Um, and today was focusing on the spiritual side of of uh, this project uh, because uh, they believe that uh, they have to ask for the blessings of of the ancestors and God Himself because we are going to touch a water body and uh, they have very strong indigenous roots into that. And so we were called in by the Gamanje to come in for the spiritual prayer uh, and ask for blessings for this project. It was spectacular. It was absolutely beautiful. I've never experienced anything like that. And I think that uh, I feel right about this project. And I'm praying that we'll be able to get this project executed as we are promising. Um, Chief, this is like you said, is a climax of all the meetings that you have. Um, as a community-based uh, project manager, how do you feel about the process, especially from the beginning? Meeting with chiefs, sub-chiefs, men, and the community-based people. How do you feel today? I feel glad because uh, our plan have eventually worked. At the initial stage of this program, we set up a plan to engage the communities. And because we are aware that uh, this Kole Lagoon project will not succeed except the communities are involved, we drew up a plan to have what we call focus group discussion with all the communities. And like you said, we have started with the, the Ajumanku Royal Clan. We got to the English uh, Jamestown. From there, we met all the Wulomes. We have been able to meet with the Kole Wuleme. We have been able to meet with the Nae Wuleme. We met with uh, the Dantu Wulome, we met with all the four Wulomes. After that, we now felt that uh, Ga has a paramount, a paramount chief who can coordinate all these community small, small meetings we have been going. Because we realized during the meetings we were going that there were, there were some divisions towards the ownership of that Kole Lagoon land. Most of the people we visited claim ownership of that land, and they also show some documents. So we felt that the uh, Ga Manche, who is the paramount ruler of the entire Ga state, will be in the position to harmonize all of them, bring them together, because we want peace. And without peace, we cannot do that program. And we, are, we thank God that uh, the Ga Manche were able to receive us in his palace two times. And then today, he has climaxed it by bringing together all the stakeholders that own that Kole Lagoon. And that's what we wanted. And today they have agreed that that project can go on and to give their royal blessing, they brought us to the spiritual implication of it. And why this is very important is that the, the investors wouldn't have been able to go through this. But because David and the group are from the community, they were able to go through this process and the prayers we are done, the blessings have been given, the project can now go on. So we are very, very happy that at the end, the community are giving us consent, we can now move to the next level. Now, David, um, since you are the president of the ICC, I just want to pick your impression on um, today's meeting especially, because it climbs everything. It's like I asked um, Chief, starting from the background, like bottom-up approach. Now, what is going to be, after this particular meeting, what is the next line of action? Well, like, like Chief uh, said, yes, this was absolutely important. And um, we basically feel blessed to be a part of this, pro this process. Um, the next stage for, this, uh, uh, for the process right now is the committee that they are going to set, that they're going to work with our legal team uh, to be able to basically get into the um, memorandum of understandings and look at concessions and all the other technical things uh, involved in this project 
uh, the land title, uh, what their shares is going to be, what are the conditions in which you're going to give the land for these projects, and, and so on and so forth. And I believe these are standard procedures, you know, in, in most uh, big projects like this. And so we want to take our time, go through all the stages as required to ensure that indeed this project becomes a success. We are making sure that every dot and boxes are checked and making sure that uh, we are not leaving anyone behind. And uh, the community and the chief, the government himself, has promised to, after the committee is finished them work, would be able to go with us together to government and uh, present a petition for government support to actually develop this lagoon and the surrounding areas into an ultra modern smart city like little downtown of Accra. That's basically the idea, to, to bring in significant change to the area. As we've talked about, you know, this project has is, is been attempted many times and it has failed. Uh, today, we kind of know why it has failed and I wouldn't want to go into that, you know, but um, I am happy to be a part of a team that looks promising and that seems to be edging towards success. Um, a real executional success of this project and to me that's very very uh, significant and important I feel blessed uh, to be honest to be a part of this. Um, Chief let me find out from you um, going through the meetings with them what has been the peculiar message that makes you feel that definitely you'll be given the permission to work on that particular land? Yeah the message is simple you see we understand that uh, what the community people actually needed to do in this program is for us to arouse their interest to take ownership of this project because we realize that sustainable development the people are the most critical factor in sustainable development as long as you do not enlighten the people as long as you do not let the people understand what you are trying to bring to them the people will not own the project and when they don't own it it will not succeed so what makes me glad is that the people have started showing that interest and have developed that sense of ownership that they even want the project to start even today or tomorrow initially most people who have attended that project before did not get to this grassroots and let these people understand the health implication of that project the economic implication and all the benefit it will bring to them. But our team have been able to do that. And they have shown joy, they are glad, they are happy. And that is interest. I always speak to the President, uh, uh, David, that at this point, immediately the community people have shown interest. The next stage of development is action. And I believe that the investors have also shown interest so that we will not take a long time between the time we have arose their interest and the time we are going to start implementation. So we are glad that this program is going to work because the community have given in to it and they have given us their support that we can go ahead. David, is the meeting today the final meeting before you sign the Memorandum of Understanding? No, no, actually. Um, uh, this is not the final. There seems to be one big meeting that is going to come up somewhere within the course of the week. And that will be the, the final meeting in the first phase of this uh, community mobilization and strategic program, program. And that is going to have the opportunity to have all the stakeholders that we have actually visited come together in one room and be able to talk about everything else that they want to talk about, including some of their little issues that they had before. Uh, they wanted to um, launch a, a peace and unity for development program. And um, the, the, the Gam and Chair uh, basically uh, want to be able to use that platform to actually get all stakeholders involved rallying for the success of this project. And so that's one of the things that he personally mentioned to me uh, that he is going to do sometime this week. Uh, he's been in contact with most of the great big figures when it comes to the Gam traditional council like uh, the Niya Topashi. Um, and he, the Gamache himself, uh, the Gan Jaseche, and all the, the, the big, the, even the king from Adang, uh, uh, Paramount uh, king of Adang, and uh, there was one from, uh, I think, Adamsi, 
yeah. uh, than say, and uh, basically all the the, the 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 clans that came together in their statement they said that came together to form the, the ten thousand fighters for the guard. They want to bring all those clans involved to say yes, and they want to use the Kole Lagoon project as a benchmark project. And to me, that was the key that actually touched me and what is made me to want to keep doing this and being a part of it. Because they are crying and saying that for 600 years and on, they have given their land and their land has been, has been Gakra, has been a capital for the past almost since um, over 100 years. And, you know, they have a lot of compensations that is supposed to be paid to them. But all these things has not been able to because there's a lot of divisions in the clans and the government doesn't really know who to pay these compositions to. And so they want to use this project to, to, to enter into a, a different level, a, a unity of the Ghana people, to be able to rally behind themselves, form a one consortium or a one body, a one voice, approaching government uh, to now look into the Ghana peoples and their livelihood and, and bring some significant change in terms of the infrastructure development like housing projects you know and, and, and stuff like that. What affects here affects everywhere as we are living in a global village. And so we want to basically call upon all stakeholders and even upon the international community to react positively to this call from the Ghana people uh, basically to bring in some form of infrastructural development to them to help them to get out of this misery because they seem to have tried everything they know how to try but nothing really seems to work for them and it, it's it's just because um, the government says they're not together and so on and so forth now that they want to be together we want to be able to rally behind them and see what the government and the international community can do for them especially with great britain i think that great britain also has a a stick to make sure that these people are helped, uh, you know, to be able to come out of their uh, situation. Well, Chief, um, let me find out from you. Let's briefly look at the benefit. We are not delving into the nitty gritties of the benefit, but obviously the community stand to benefit something, and especially the youths. So what message do you have for them? You see, the benefit that is very key to my mind and to the group is that of creating employment for the numerous men and women that are roaming around the people uh, that cry. See, the first time we went to these yeah. communities, you will discover that there are some able-bodied men and women. Yeah. Majority of them not doing anything. And like I said in the last interview, not because they don't want to work, but because there is no work for them to do. This project will develop a lot of jobs. And it will engage this youth, it will engage these women into something very productive. And like you see, when the youth are, uh, are not engaged in that way, they might take to crime. I even thank God that it is not as it is in other countries where you have the issues of Boko Haram, you have the issues of kidnapping and whatever. So this, job, this, this, this project will create jobs and it will engage the youth in a very productive event that they, they, they will not have idle mind anymore. Now, secondly, the health implication of that project is that a lot of the of, of the thing that always come out from that Kodela Lago, that environment, the way it has been polluted, we even thank God that people are still alive in that kind of area. But right now that that project will make sure that that place is cleaned, in such a way that people can now be able to live good in that environment. So the health implication it is going to generate to them will be very, very wonderful. Then secondly, the economic benefit to the community. The community is going to be part of this project. The community is going to have shares in this project. And it's going to be something that will attract a lot of benefit to them economically. To the state also, when this area is developed, we are going to have a lot of companies coming in from all over the world. A lot of banks, a lot of uh, investments coming in. The tax implication is good that the government will get is also something that will be wonderful. It will attract investment, it will attract tourism, it will attract a lot of other good things that will benefit the state, benefit the communities, and 
and in the long run, benefit livelihood of everyone. I think, uh, first of all, <laughs> accepting us in the palace alone means that they have consented to whatever they want us to do. But in principle, we need to put everything on paper that will make it properly uh, presented and properly legally binding. Now, uh, some of the, the things that we have to do cannot just be on camera because of the weapons ICC want to use to protect itself. But basically, with my observation, I don't think uh, if all the parties have agreed, they all have their consent involved, I don't think uh, we, we will have much problem. What is important is who the Alodia owner of the land is, in which the Gamanche gave his promise that he's ready to release any document being so important for the project to go on. So for me, what I would say, we are in a good move and legally, uh, when the team sit down, we will look at all the loopholes that need to be filled so that um, the ICC team, the legal team, can package itself well so that when we go before government, we don't hate and come back. What should be the approach of ICC in case after signing the MOU and later on starting with the projects and there's another fashion from this group coming out from anywhere coming out to say that there is litigation of a sort on the land and they're going to go to court how should or what should be the process or the position of icc okay you know um, icc at this moment is not acting as a contractor icc is not acting as government before it gets to government the government give it approval it means that all the processes from the chief and whoever matter have consented and have agreed that the job should go on. So there is no point in time where a contract has been given by government with an agreement with the chief. There is no way that the contractor will go to site and then somebody will bring an injunction because the key parties have already consented to it. So for me, what we have to do is all legal document needed for the project is secured. Government gives it blessing. As now we can confirm that the chief have also given their blessing. Then nobody have the onus to bring any court process. Unless even before we even get to the site, if there will be a litigation, by now the message is already gone. So till we hit the sword, that is where we will know the conflicting side, whether there are issues. But as it is now, at this material moment, we just have to agree that truly these are the owners of the land, truly the contract has been given by government, and then we, we get the job rolling. So there is nothing for us to fear. Let's, let's all put in what we can do, and then we get the job rolling. I want to ask you something. I will all um, channel or champion this development because of first and foremost pollution. We know that um, according to the WHO 2019 report, the Koi Lagoon is the second most polluted lagoon or river in the world. Um, we, it is, the lagoon doesn't pollute itself. It is individual institutions, industries that does that. So we want to find out if perhaps we'll start the project and we still have pollution going on. Can ICC or an its partners sue those who are polluting individuals, institutions, governments, and what have you? Okay, thank you very much. You know, pollution itself is an offense under the law. And no matter what, there will be laid down principles given to the consortium. When I say the consortium, the contractor, ICC, whoever matter, to regulate some of the activities coming to the project site. So if it is noted that this particular factory or the activity of this factory is affecting the project, of course, we could send any uh, court action or any of these uh, 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 restrictions on them. And uh, you cannot also stop people for not doing the activities. So that is why I'm saying this is at the initial stage. 
we will look at all those things before we bring a confirmed or a precise agreement with whoever matter because i have seen that the kole links to the sea it means all excretory all waste are my, uh, just migrating there and then they will enter the sea uh, you, can, you cannot restrict some of these things but the project itself have to have measures to regulate some of these pollutions coming in but i don't think uh, structurally or strategically in principle it will affect uh, the project uh -huh. so let's let's take it slowly and do what is supposed to be done and uh, if there are people coming to interfere with the project of course we have the power to sue if there is anybody trying to interfere but for now at this level let's get to the site and if we have the blessing as we are all expecting of course we, we will take everybody on as expected.